lot of black people in church are not gonna like you. Oh, you just hit something on a nail. Oh, you filthy. Yeah, I just, I just took something from this. Oh, it's hard. Lord, sweet Jesus. That is way different from what I've learned over my years. I asked for moments like this, so it's just. Hey man, bro, that's so cool. For the fact that this just happened, <laughs> that's the, that's the evidence that y'all need. So I got a question. Yeah. What's your, uh, what's your threshold about? What's the, what's the, what's the question you asked me earlier? What's, um, what gets people to heaven and what yeah. keeps them out of it? What's your idea? You believe in the Lord, your God. Believe in the Lord, your God. You believe in Jesus. Because this is the thing people mix up. They, I hate when people do this. I hate when people do this. Please don't do this. When people mix talk, up talk humanism and Christianity, humanism puts onus on you. It's your responsibility whether you reach salvation. That is not Christianity. Otherwise, it wouldn't be good news. The gospel literally means good news. The good news is this, listen. The weight that you've tried to carry to, to try to live this life and do your best and it's just never good enough, that's not the basis of whether you're gonna be judged or not. Because your good enough is not good enough. Your righteous acts are filthy rags in comparison to a holy, perfect God. So think about it like this. A God that sits up in heaven, just imagine this. Okay, we're gonna step into the throne room right here. Step into the throne room, you stand before God. This God created the heavens, the earth, all the planets of the solar system. He created the human brain, the heart, the God of Abraham, Moses, the dude that split the Red Sea. And you're standing before him, this God in all his perfection. And you're listing out all the good deeds that you've done in your life. You're gonna be a little bit insecure. A lot of bit insecure. Why is that? Because how can I sit here and say that I did all these good things and this is the man that's before me? You're close to the kingdom, my brother. Yeah, so listen just, to this. That man just did some stuff right Isn't there. Isn't that crazy? Uh, but what God does is this. The Bible says the righteous, meaning those that are clean and right and good, they live by faith faith in Jesus. That's what the New Testament means. It means a new covenant, a new contract, that the old contract was under the law. And it says in Galatians 3 that we were held captive under the law. But Jesus, and the law was meant uh, to hold transgressions until the one who came, which was Jesus, was to die under the law and be resurrected to set us free. He lived the full extent of perfection unto the law so that he in his innocent blood could say that we're made righteous by our faith in him. So what makes you go to heaven, be in the presence of God is trust. That's what literally what it means. You trust in Jesus. And you know what happens when you do that? People say, well, bro, don't you have to tell these people they got to live this way? Alex, you got to tell them if they don't, if they don't, if they don't stop smoking, they're gonna go to hell. Oh, Alex, if you don't tell them this, this. I said, bro, I'm not so insecure to have to tell the Holy Spirit how to be good at his job. The Holy Spirit does that. When you receive Jesus, the Bible says the Father honors you because you respect the sacrifice of his son. Not only that, it says Jesus is left, right? But he says something greater I give to you. That the, the, the presence of God is not for, in four walls of a church. It now resides in man, the people that accept his son. The reason why you can accept the Holy Spirit and the presence of God can dwell within you is because the blood of Jesus, what his sacrifice did, you know that haunted conscience that you deal with, that you think you're not good enough and you're not worthy and you're not holy and all your, the, the acts you've ever done and will do, what it does is it goes like this and washes over you and covers you. And so you are no longer a sinner, but you're a son and the presence of God is pleased to dwell within you. And you're a carrier of, of his presence. The Bible says he gives you the spirit of his son that you cry, Abba, Father. You look to the Father and you see him as your actual father, that you're received into the family of God because you accept the Son of God. Lord, sweet Jesus. Very different gospel I'm sure you probably are familiar with. Oh yeah, definitely. Very different, very different. That's why I'm on some Jesus. <laughs> Cause like man, yeah, you just had, you just slapped me on the head of some stuff just now. That's way different from what I've learned over my years. It's like it's freedom though, right? Yeah. Like you don't. What bondage do you feel right now, or guilt, or shame, or? 
I don't feel much anymore, not just now. You know what Jesus says? So we focus more on this. Jesus says, I am the truth, I'm the way, and I'm the life. You know what we focus on? Getting the right God right. We focus on the truth. I got to figure out all my Bible knowledge. But we forget the way. And what the way Jesus says, he says, take upon my yoke, for it is easy. Take my burden, for it is light. You know what he meant by that? He was a rabbi, again, what we learned earlier. So rabbis, what they called their teaching or what they would put on people is a yoke, the way in which their followers would live. So there was many other rabbis that were teaching other things like Jesus, not, not like Jesus, but Jesus says, listen, the burden that I place on you and the yoke, it's easy and it is light. My way of living is easy and this is good news. It's freedom. What other people were doing and what Jesus condemned is there was religious leaders that were putting on an unrealistic expectation to fulfill the law that made people slaves because they never could get it right. And you know, that's what a lot of pastors seem to do too. There's a lot less preaching of freedom and a lot more about behavior, but you know what? Jesus is more interested with your surrender than he is your behavior. Oh, you just hit something on a nail. Oh, you filthy. Ooh. Isn't that good, bro? It's good news. This is why I'm, I'm jacked about it, bro. Ooh. A lot of black people in church are not going to like you. <laughs> <laughs> if you truly get it, Man, it what? sets you free. And then you know what happens. So when I believe in my heart, Jesus says, so there's Pharisees that were tripping because his disciples didn't wash their hands. And he said, your disciples, you're going to let them be ceremonially unclean before they eat. And he goes, listen, he says, it's not what enters your mouth that defiles you, makes you unclean. He says that what comes out of it, you know it. Why? He says, because the root of all of it is from the heart. And so if I believe in Jesus in my heart, you know what my life is an overflow of? The fruits of the spirit. So people get it wrong, exactly. So then my life, because I believe in Jesus and I have a relationship with him, I don't get it all perfect right away, but as I get to know him and my heart changes, I'm a son of peace. I produce life. Control, I'm loving. You I'm, what you're able to control. Yeah. I, I become holy. I become pure. My desires for the world, I no longer want to be a part of it because that just leads me into slavery of my own primal desires. Oh, yeah. See the difference in thinking? And there's multiple ways of slavery, so it's, it's crazy on how you just said that. Yeah, I just, I just took something from this. Yeah. Oh, all right. Damn. Isn't that crazy? Is it, you're like, it's good news, right? Yeah, brother, you just put me on to something. I ain't going to hold you. So you believe in Jesus. You accept this, this testimony. So it's as simple as that, bro. So you want to know how you're saved and how you get to heaven? No, I love to learn. Well, you, you already know it. I just taught you. I mean, yeah. What qualifies you to get to heaven? Here's a test. I ain't got me. You know it. You uh, know it, bro. Who, who, here's a better thing. Who qualifies you? Who qualifies you is Jesus. That's it, bro. And so you're trying. You need to stop. Your will, you need to lay down. And the king of your heart is right now you. So don't call him king. Don't call him Lord if you don't dictate your life and you don't love him. Don't say you love him and you live contrary to him. I believe this is a divine encounter where God's like, I'm calling back my son. And this is an opportunity that I'm sending a love letter to him and saying, hey, come back. It's super simple. You just have to believe it. Because I've been talking. I've been talking to my man upstairs, but I haven't been talking to him the way that I should be. The Bible says in James 4, 8, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. The Bible says, diligently, earnestly seek me with your whole heart and you will find me. He says, knock and the door will be open. He says, seek and you will find. He got me, everybody. I ain't going to lie to you. You believe in Jesus. If you, I've been believing in Jesus, yeah. but he just taught me some new stuff. I'm not going to lie to you. It got my mind spinning. It got my head going. I asked for moments like this, so it's just. Amen, bro. That's so cool. For the fact that this just happened, <laughs> it's, Praise God. it's that's 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 the that's the evidence that y'all need. You know what I'm saying, my man? You mind if I pray for you quick? Uh, God, right now we thank you uh, for justice. God, I pray that uh, your presence would be manifest right now, and he would know you. God, would you lead him into understanding the wisdom that he lacks? I pray that you would give it to him. The confusion that he has, I pray that you would bring clarity. Uh, God, in the in the seed that's been planted, I pray that it would grow, and when it gets ch choked out by the concerns of this world. God, I pray that you would show him how good you are. And right now, Justice, you just ask, like, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. 
Encounter me right now. Encounter me right now. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. I believe in your son. I believe in your son. He died on the cross for my sins. He died on the cross for my sins. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In your name, amen. In your name, amen. Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate you.